Pretty excited about showing you some footage of the Mike Resma early years. Mm. You might not have seen this in a while, but um, it was your first conference with yes. Symmetry. Um, you were heading up the Advanced Markets Department and were absolutely slaying the country's debt clock. You remember this? I think I might. Let's take a look. Yeah. Take a look Killing at it. Confused. In the year oh! oh man. <laughs> It brings back that all my leg amazing. and back pain from <laughs> three years ago. Mike, <laughs> I don't Look at that mean. Jump up and clap uh, right there. The there you go. I don't mean to laugh, but in my head, I've watched that video a thousand times, and I used to always imagine your legs kicking above the stage <laughs> yep. from out of sight. So you can see where the legs get up, get off, and just blood, bruises, scrapes all over. That was a good introduction. What's going through your head? as you're filming this dynamic speech, you're crushing it, what's the first thing you think of when your butt hits the ground? Well, the first thing I, I'm thinking is, where did the floor go, <laughs> right? Because I take a step back and I'm pointing at the deck clock, I'm getting in my rhythm, and then all of a sudden there is no floor there. There is no tape. I'm surprised that there was such a big gap, but then I'm going down, and I'm just in awe, like, how did I just fall? What just happened? There's a bunch of people in the crowd. <laughs> I better get up and get this thing uh, going. So I, I just got up as quick as I could. I do what I always do and just laugh at myself and, <laughs> and clap and yell and scream and just went, went right back into it. But um, It's not how you start. It's how you finish, right? Yes, that is exactly right. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to Todd Talks. Today we are joined by Chief Distribution Officer of Quility, Mr. Mike Resma. Very honored to be so. And Mike, we're going to have a fun today. We're going to play a little game. You might have seen it on some game shows out there. It's called Word Sneak. You've never seen no. it. Well, in front of you is a stack of 10 cards. Okay. As we're going through our conversation today, you've got to slowly flip over each card and we're going to casually work these words into our conversation oh man this is gonna get interesting yeah we can do it though all right we can do hard things we can all right you ready let's do it game on game on here we go well buddy first of all i want to say that i'm very grateful and appreciative for you joining and uh you have been on todd talks before matter of fact you might be one of the first repeat uh guest wow yeah. what an honor as we saw at the very beginning there from uh, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And uh, we like to have a lot of fun. You're a good sport about falling off stage there at your first conference, buddy. But I will say that that was the beginning of unprecedented growth in the Department of Advanced Markets. And that team has continued to thrive. And so much goodness brought an opportunity and uh, development for the entire distribution here at Quility. Uh, symmetry specifically and a lot of that growth is is credited to you so appreciate we that. appreciate your leadership buddy talk to us a little bit about how you became uh mike resma how yeah. tell us a little bit before we got to quility thank you for having me on buddy it's always an honor and a pleasure so mike resma as you know um, married to the most amazing wife amanda mm -hmm. which you know as mm -hmm. well two beautiful daughters stella and leona seven and four years old right now I'm a huge football fan. Mm -hmm. I think you know that yeah. as well. Um, Michigan, Detroit Lions. Uh, I grew up in Michigan at a young age, and I grew up in the heyday of Michigan sports. I mean, you're talking about the bad boys of the Pistons, the Fab Five with Michigan. You're talking about Bo Schemblecker and Lloyd Carr, Tom Brady, Charles Woodson with yeah. the Wolverines. Yeah. So I, I grew up watching Michigan sports, and not to throw a little salt in the wound, <laughs> there was a Michigan game that happened uh, last month against your team, I think, Alabama, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's not, it's not football season anymore for us. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I do not... support your Lions. Okay, you know? very good. I can't and get behind that. Lions, so huge football fan. We had the, the honor and pleasure of beating Alabama and going to the national <laughs> championships, which um, we were really excited about. Yes, my beloved Crimson Tide did fall to your Michigan Wolverines. So much okay. respect. And um, it has been a pleasure getting to know your family and your, yep. your wife and kids. And I can say that... Uh, your work ethic is one of the things that I appreciate about you, and you take that same type of energy and uh, bring it to your home as well. And the type of father you are to your kids and, and the type of husband you are to your wife is, is significant as well. So I um, wanted everybody out there to kind of get a glimpse into who you are as a family man as well. But talk to us about the early days. You know, we, 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 we laugh about you falling off stage at the first conference, but 
Um, it's all about how you finish and, and throughout your, throughout your, uh, your upbringing and the early years of your career, like you've always been about, um, a positive mindset and setting yourself goals and, um, truly believing things into existence and talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it comes from really, I think my, my upbringing, my, my parents got divorced when I was three, when I was three years old. Um, so I was raised by a single mom, mm -hmm. right? So I had an example of what hard work and dedication look like. I mean, to be a single mom, especially now that I'm older and I'm married and I have kids, like I value more now what mm -hmm. my mom actually went through to provide for me and to give me the, the, the life and the resources that I need to succeed. So she worked three jobs um, went to college at the same time while working three jobs to try and raise me. So like I had that early example of hard work. I started working when I was 11 years old. I remember sitting at the dinner table with my mom at 11 years old saying, I know we don't have enough money. Like what can I do to start, mm. to, to start helping out? And I got a part-time job with my mom selling newspapers at a church on Sundays at 11 years old. I think I made maybe $20 in the four Sundays for a month. And I took that $20, went to Smart and Final, bought bulk candy so that then I could sell that candy at school and just had that vision, even at that young age and that entrepreneurial spirit to, spirit to say, okay, well, no matter what your circumstances, you can make things better. So I took what was given to me, found opportunities to continue to um, do more and earn more. And that just kind of trickled on through my life. It's this... At 15 years old, I got my work permit and was able to start working. And I remember me and my mom going through, going to different places to uh, try and find employment for me. And I'll never forget going to Target. I go in, I go into the store and believe it or not, and maybe it's 15 years old and hormones going on <laughs> at that point, but I remember thinking, man, there's a lot of beautiful women here that work here. Mom, <laughs> at Target. At Target. Yeah. And I go to my mom. I said, Mom, I'm going to find my wife at Target. Casting a wide net there. Casting a, casting yeah. a wide net. Mom, I'm going to find my wife at, at Target. And believe it or not, fast forward a decade or so, I actually find my wife at Target. Nice. So yeah. that was the one of the first things that I remember of speaking something into existence. Mm -hmm. But my, my career was mostly inside of retail management. Uh, I decided to uh, uh, make a move and and get into uh, mortgage lending in 2007 mm -hmm. looking back great not the timing. best time to get into mortgage lending <laughs> well time uh but the thing that was great in it, with that it was the first time since i chose not to go to to college it was my first time that self-development and learning really piqued my interest because that company had me read the book, mm. The Secret. So when you talk about being positive, envisioning things and, and willing things into existence, that book, The Secret, just opened up my eyes into law of attraction, the power of thought and affirmation, and just thinking about something, believing in it, and just being able to, uh, to see it. Well, fast forward past Target and kind of what started leading you to the insurance business? Yeah, most of my life was in uh, was in the retail was in the retail industry, and I felt like I was at a, a crossroads, almost like a, a traffic light, if you will, mm -hmm. right? Where it was like red, yellow, or red, yellow, green. Like, am am I am I stopping retail? Am I going to go on, or is it my time to to do something different? Right. Mm -hmm. So, I decided that with no job lined up, I was fed up with retail. Uh, I was tired of working 80 hours a week, getting paid for 40 hours of work and just dealing with that retail grind. And I quit. I had no job lined up. I cashed out my 401k, paid the early penalties, paid the taxes and said, OK, this is going to give me six to nine months to figure out what I wanted to do. You had a lot of really strong decisions, right? <laughs> right. I yeah. did. But did you it, buy a ski boat? <laughs> I did not buy a ski <laughs> okay. boat, but I decided to, to bet on myself and I gave myself permission to do that. Yeah. Right. So I found an ad on Craigslist. For Asura. And uh, the ad on there was unlimited income potential and help and protect families. And that really resonated with me. So I, I uh, responded to the ad, met with a, met with an area manager with a, a Shura mm -hmm. and uh, ended up getting the job. And that's what got me to get my life license and got into the insurance industry. And uh, Asura um, merged with Symmetry 
some years ago. It was one of the first opportunities I had to come out and meet you and see you in action doing a, a live boot camp. As sure as mascot was a platypus, right? <laughs> It, nope. was, it nope. was not a platypus. I can't remember. I thought it was some kind of unique uh, mascot. But um, So you're, you're at Asura. You're, you're finding your sea legs in the insurance space. How long did it take you to feel comfortable and start seeing some success? It's funny, you know, I didn't have much of sales, didn't have much sales experience um, because I just had maybe nine months of that mortgage lending before that went before that business went under and went back into to retail. So, you know, this was my real first shot at, at sales and obviously first time in insurance. So learn the script. We have solid training. I get 50 B leads, which people don't know. They're the age leads. They were two years old at that point, and that mm -hmm. was our job. We start picking up the phones and start setting up appointments. So I got 50 B leads my very first week. I set six appointments on a Friday for appointments for Saturday through Wednesday. I saw four of those six, and I closed all four. So my very mm -hmm. first week, I closed 100%. But the challenge with that is that I thought that I was better than what I was. I thought, oh, this is it. I got it. I close 100%. Nobody closes 100% their first week. And then the second week went 0 for 9. Third week <laughs> went 0 for 6. And just really had to look at it. And what I realized is that I had false confidence. I got lucky on those. And I started deviating from the script, the sales and the process. So I just went back to work, worked with my mentors and my coaches, microwaved my uh, my scripting, and uh, got into uh, um, got into a rhythm. You know, it took me a good six months to to understand the importance and the value of of insurance. My dad had passed away six months into me going into a Ashura, and at that point, the structure of of pay was a little bit different. There was a small W-2 model. So six months in, get the call from my aunt that my dad died and I had to fly oh, out of California to Vegas, try and find out if he had any insurance policies, what was going on. I ended up spending two weeks out of work, didn't have vacation, didn't have PTO. Um, mm -hmm. My money from my 401k was, was running out, but obviously I, I needed to try and figure out what I was gonna do with my dad's situation. So like once I saw the amount of travel that it took and the heartache and the pain and trying to figure out what was going to happen to his house, what was going to happen to the cars, what do I do with all of his property? By the time that we got all that stuff resolved, I was like, this is so valuable. Mm -hmm. There, There's no other industry that I believe that is more important than the insurance industry outside of the medical field. If you think mm -hmm. about, right, if a, if a doctor or a surgeon cannot help somebody in need, what is the next industry mm. to stand in line? Insurance. It's the insurance industry. Mm. We're the ones providing the family peace of mind and financial protection to make sure that they can deal with the grieving process and, and maintain and maintain their life. So it was that moment six months in when my dad died that I realized that insurance was what I wanted to do, what I needed to do, saw the value in it, and then I really just started honing in my craft, mm. right? So Ended up being within the first couple of years, you know, a top 20 agent. I was never the top agent, top three agents. I was a good agent. And but then I had the opportunity to run an office and be an yeah. area manager. And that's where that's where I felt like I, I was meant to be, like bringing people on and coaching them and mentoring them and, and helping them change their life like I like the insurance yeah. industry did for me. And then had a very successful agency. Built one of the top agencies over at Asura and just uh, impacted a lot of a lot of lives, not only in your own agency, but many agencies across that company and so many of those awesome individuals that are still with us and thriving today. And I'm sure it's cool for them to see your journey. But you also found um, a, a love for the advanced markets while you were building an agency and you were working over at Asura. And uh, talk to me about that. Like what, what, what spurred that interest and uh, what drives that passion still today? I'm so sorry. This game is really <laughs> screwing with my <laughs> screwing with my mind. I'm trying to think of the word and thinking what you're saying. What was it about? I'm trying to figure out how to say lawnmower for five minutes. So <laughs> well, that's all right because I threw one in there that was not a not very yeah. well said. So so uh. so so during that building an agency, you also found a passion and a drive for advanced markets products and oh, really yeah. really trying to tackle um, large issues that we deal with and 
in society today. So kind of where did that start from, yeah. debt-free life, that type of thing? Yeah, you know, most people in the insurance industry, you're used to selling term products, FE products. One thing that we were really passionate about was cross-selling and really taking a consultative approach to to these appointments, right? Like doing a real needs analysis, a fact finder, and not just going in saying, hey, this is the one product I'm going to sell. We didn't know what we were going to sell. We really wanted to tailor that that product to the to the client so like after a certain period of time you know there's a there's so much that you can do with a life insurance license so then wanted to learn about iuls about par whole lives infinite banking strategies debt elimination asset protection because if you only have one product that you can sell to a client, then you're not really doing what's right for the client. So mm-hmm. once once I was ready to learn those advanced markets and, and started learning those, I saw that there's so much value in what we can do for people because our market is middle America, as you know. Yep. 99% of them don't have financial advisors. Most of them don't have half a million dollars to go get financial advice from somebody from a from a financial advisory firm, right? So like I felt like middle America, we have a duty and obligation or responsibility to provide as much value as possible because the clients that have 50,000, that have 100,000, that can't get the financial support, Who's going to help them if we don't, right? Mm -hmm. So it was real important for us and our agency and for our organization to make sure that we had an opportunity to help those people out, help set up retirement, protect their retirement, eliminate debt, and have them create their own bank. So it was really just understanding how those products provided value and then knowing that in our market that we serve, there was a huge need for it. Mm -hmm. And that that impact is still felt today. You pioneered... uh... Uh, a lot of the things that we use today in debt-free life, I know there's there's so much opportunity and resets and the way that, that, that the merger between Assure and Symmetry uh, created so much opportunity for growth. I know the last three years we've seen unprecedented growth out of the advanced markets uh, category, record years and IULs and annuities, of course, uh, participating whole life policies as well. So um, talk to us about that transition, though. So you've you're having a lot of success. You're implementing a lot of programs. You know, there's uh, you're just a, a hexagon of talent here. So, how how did that transition go from Asura to to Symmetry? Nerve wracking, yeah. right? Like you think you, at Asura we had a hundred uh, we had 150 agents, right? Symmetry's got thousands of agents. So, like trying to implement programs with a distribution channel that's so large poses a lot of challenges. You've got a lot of different opinions on how things can be done. You've got um, people steady in their process, right? But it's for me, it was just like riding a, a bicycle and remembering those, that, that muscle memory. Um, and it, it's just about sharing the, the message, the value and the impact and getting people on board with Quilities mm-hmm. and, and symmetry's core values of making an impact, right? Yeah. That, that's that's at the core of, of our of our core values. So I think slowly people started seeing the value of this and how it can help out the agents, the agencies, and most importantly the clients that we serve. So it yeah. wasn't an easy transition, but we we powered through. You reference a bicycle, but I know you and you have high energy. <laughs> I'd say you're more like an ATV than a bicycle. Buddy. I appreciate that. It you... might have had something to do with the cards. <laughs> <laughs> You've got some good energy. So um, the transition, you come over to Symmetry, you, you head up the entire advanced markets department um, in just a short period of time, buddy. Everybody saw uh, the passion in which you, you care about agents, your innovation, the way that you look to take care of our clients, and you want to continue to grow. So, it, it, I mean, in an unheard of time, you go from new, new insurance agent struggling Finding your finding your path in your new career. Now you're the chief distribution officer of an organization that's just got hockey stick growth even through a pandemic. Um, part of what you're doing now in your new role as chief distribution officer is creating new opportunities to protect clients in ways that um, they've not been protected in the past. To provide agents with tools and products um, that hadn't even existed before. So talk to me a little bit about digital products, um, what we've already seen, and what, what we can maybe expect in the, the coming year. Yeah, you know, the, the insurance industry, um, you know, carriers and organizations, they work on old, archaic legacy systems, 
right? And um, it's a, it's a lot to innovate for insurance carriers, right? So we decided to be mm-hmm. at the forefront of the in, insure uh, insure tech space and the innovation, and that's why Coolty was formed in in 2020. So what we've done in this short period of time. Um, from 2020 to through 2024 now is we have embraced fear. Yeah. We have embraced the unknown and uh, we have done these things that other people have it. You know, one of the major issues that we have in the insurance industry is that it takes too long for policies to get approved and um, clients getting coverage and agents getting paid. Well, digital instant issue products uh, does that. We've launched three of them already. We'll be launching four within the next few months. Right. So we know that instant issue digital insurance products are going to be a way for the future. But you also need insurance is all about activity. So it's all about how many families you can meet. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to have a a lead source. You need to have your own leads marketplace with all the changes that are happening. So we've got our own leads marketplace with different lead types. We've got um, engagement platforms to help nurture those, to send out campaigns and workflows. So you don't have to sit there and dial and and pound the phones uh, and do 400 dials a week anymore. You can leverage technology to engage and get appointments. And then once you're in the appointment, you've got fulfillment platforms platforms and illustration platforms to help show the value of the insurance products that we have and help with product selection. So we're making things so much easier and and have visions of being the the platform for the insurance industry in the future. Yeah, and it's really changing the way that agents look at their career and we've exposed ourselves to so many more um, people that have never been in the insurance space before that see what we're doing, see the lifestyle that we create with time and money and opportunities and the 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 real um the real opportunity for me is to find joy in what you do and to really be able to to protect people and do good in the do do good in the world while you're making a very healthy living for your family uh one of the projects that you're you're extremely passionate about is uh called road yes and this is all about our agents and all about making their success Um, something that is a a true blueprint that anybody can follow. So talk to me a little bit about the origination of ROAD and and, and what that stands for. Yeah, I wish I could take uh, credit for that, but we have amazing founders and executive team, right? And when uh, a year and a half ago, you know, it was really you and me and and Sigworth and Ditson that were Mm -hmm. really leading the charge on sales, but we were kind of doing it all. So we we know that the core functions of our business are really broken down into four categories and four segments, right? So road is recruiting, onboarding, activation, and development. So Mm -hmm. we knew that Everything that we do falls into those four categories. So now we needed to focus on staffing that, right? Mm-hmm. So we got to get somebody owning recruiting, own, uh, owning the onboarding process, activation, taking somebody to from a new writer to a consistent writer, and then get them developed and climbing levels of leadership. It's like planting a it's like planting a tree, starting off with that candidate and getting them all the way to the top contract, having systems, processes, reporting, KPIs, and all platforms that they need to to get to the top. Yeah, it's been a uh, monumental um, task to undertake that you've done effortlessly and to see the synergy behind the scenes here at the corporate office and the way that we lean into it really is going to provide a clear vision for us to help us um, create more successful individuals to build their own agencies and impact that many more uh, families. So I know, Resma, that we've got some white papers out there. I'll be sure and check that out down in the comments. And then... Uh, lastly, we're all excited about the future. We're getting ready to um, embark upon a new year here. So what are you most excited about coming up in the future? And um, yeah. what things should we shed in our past to make sure that we can uh, we can enjoy all the success? Look, it's we have done so much man this is kill this is killing me <laughs> this this game threw me off so so much and I'm so mad that you went through yours. I feel like your words are a little bit easier than mine. That's not um, true. But, it, you know, so much so much has changed since COVID and the, and the pandemic. I feel like we've been uh, paddling upstream. I'm not giving up. I'm still going. You Second know, place is honorable. It, it is honorable. You know, it's we, the first loser. 
We've got to have uh, eagle vision. Some people might say the owl vision is even better because they can see in the because they can see in the night. But you know, I think what we need to what what we need to realize is that when companies are innovating and transforming so much, and nobody is transformed as much as we have in this mm-hmm. short period of time. I mean, companies are lucky if they've launched one digital product in the last three years, and to say that we've launched three and we're on the back end of four more within the next few months, and we've done an engagement platform. We've done fulfillment platforms, illustration platforms, Quility University, performance dashboard. Like yeah. there's been so many changes in what I what I want to tell people is it's tough to go through that. Yes, it's challenging to to learn and adopt all of those. But this is the year to take all of that and mix it with the fundamentals of insurance and the things that have been made people successful in insurance for a hundred years. And that's mm-hmm. activity, right? Mm-hmm. And Um, activity with clients, activity with recruiting, take that activity along with those platforms, master those, let's create the systems and processes for the new digital ecosystem. Let's take this, let's run with it together and we'll be at the forefront of uh, insurance distribution in the future. Believe in it, buddy. We do have a bright future, man, and we're so grateful that you stopped by to talk to me today on Todd Talks. We're so grateful for the leadership and the heart um, today's episode, I hope, showed a lot of people out there. If you don't know who Mike Resma is, um, he's a fearless leader. He's somebody that's extremely passionate about the agents that we serve, um, about the families we protect, and uh, really building a bright future here at Quility and at Symmetry to provide an opportunity for a lot of people to um, come build themselves a lifestyle and a business that they can be proud of. And um, so, for you as a human, as a boss, as a leader of this organization, We're just very grateful to have you, buddy, and uh, really appreciate appreciate you making time to stop by today. Thank you. I appreciate that. And whoever thought of this game, (laughs) shame on you. Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of like fantasy football where I win in Uh, the end, right? So second place isn't bad. Uh Actually, you beat me, so that doesn't work either. It's all right. Yeah, nice try. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today on Todd Talks. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode. And until then, take care. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Todd Talks. Be sure and give us a like and subscribe. Check out the links below. And we look forward to seeing you on future episodes. Are we done here? Am I done? I'm done. <laughs>